Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Previously, things have started turning sour between the relationships of all the main characters. Susato was outed as having read a very private manuscript, which upset Iris and Herlock, and, well, Gina said some words that seemed to rub off, to, rub off onto Iris, and now Iris might be thinking that Herlock Sholmes is keeping secrets from her. And, well, Herlock woke Ryunosuke up in the middle of the night to point out that, hey, Iris is missing, and the light in the pawnbrokery has been on for the last hour, which is the scene of a crime and should be closed at this hour anyway, so something weird is going on, and hopefully we do not find a dead body in there, because that would be very bad. So, let's go. The door to Windebanks. It's open. And the lamp is burning. Must be Gina, mustn't it? Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly, something is afoot inside. I see... Oh... I see a spatter of blood right there on the calendar on the right. Quite a large spatter of blood, really. I recall that Windebank said he was extremely punctual. Every day, at precisely midnight, he would go to that calendar and tear off a new page. Gosh, if someone were to know that he was that punctual, it would make it very easy to ambush him, but that begs the question, how did someone sneak up behind him in the first place? At least, I'm assuming that's Windebank's blood. I don't know who else would be right near that calendar, but... I mean, that is the entrance to the store, so it really could have been anyone. I'm not sure. And actually, is it just me, or is it actually... Like... The, the gold portion of that hanging ornament, it looks cracked. It's weird. Hmm. There's no one here. Oh yes, there is. I didn't recognize those silhouettes at all. Also gunshot, uh-oh. Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Sholmes! What the? Has Sholmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Naruhodo. But... After them, go! Right. Oh, chase after the two gunmen. Re real smart. Blast. I've lost them. Hello, hello, what have we here? Oh. The alarm just was just raised from this pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windebanks. Ooh, anime. Oh, I'm nervous. <gasps> Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Narado! <sighs> How bad is it? Ah, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. In the storeroom. Hurry! Oh, that's a dead body. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. It's Gina. Well, I know who the new defendant's gonna be. <laughs> oh no. Oh 
who are those two... Those two shapes? I barely got a look at them. But it's so odd. Here I was theorizing that Windebank was injured near the calendar, but his body was found in the rear storeroom. The locked door besides. Oh, that's so weird. Huh? Oh, this is a replay of what just happened. Behind that door, in the storeroom, hurry! Oh, I didn't see that she had a gun in her hand. Oh, god damn it. It's it's China? I don't believe that she did it for a second. From that moment, when the bank's pawnbrokery became a crime scene. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. I seem to recall earlier that I said, Wow, well, if, if there is going to be a dead body to find in there, I hope it's Windebank so I wouldn't have to... <laughs> I wouldn't have to endure his... His... Related gag. So, hooray, net victory. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll find out who really shot him. We'll get Gina acquitted. It's fine. Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. Oh, yes, we asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Hurley and Ginny were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Runo? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Hmm... <sighs> Oh, this is going to be a very uncomfortable conversation. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windebank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, yes, I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all of those police carriages pulling up outside a shop. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Windebanks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out onto the street and I chased after them, but they got away. So it was one of them who shot old Mr. Windebank, I suppose? I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh, why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. G Ginny? But, but why? Well, the thing is... No, Ginny wouldn't do something like that. I know, I know. None of us think she did it. Then why have they arrested her? I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do. So, where is Hurley, then? Is he still there investigating the scene? He really ought to have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some news about Mr. Sholmes. He was taken to hospital this morning. What? Well, um... When we entered Windebanks, a gun was fired and... He took a bullet. H Hurley? Who was shot? 
No. No. It's, it's all right. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He, he's at St. Sinners. They're attending to him there. St. Sinners is a badass name. God damn. Literally. I must see him at once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. Why not? That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. To... to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. It was the two thugs that were in Mr. Windbank's shop. They shot Mr. Sholmes when he disturbed them, you see. It was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I, I just froze. After them! Go! After that, I ran out into the street, but... Well, they were long gone. I, I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry, it's my fault. I let them get away. I think that's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them, you might have been shot as well, Runo. On top of everything else, I, I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Yeah, that was my thought, too. Where's Susie, Runo? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there, then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Miss Susato stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sholmes, so they didn't get started until later. Ah, oh, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to me leaving early. You should have let me know and I would have come to the station. I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were at the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? After all, they shot Hurley dead, didn't they? No. I, I, I mean, Mr. Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. Oh, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Windebank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. And the storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh no! And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards... Don't tell me. There was no one else in the room. Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well... Ugh, what can I say? Damned if I agree, damned if I don't. I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment, but I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you, Runo. I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. I'm not sure how I feel about taking a ten-year-old child to the scene of a murder. I don't want to leave her all alone here either. All right then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh yes, I'd love to. Gina's at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is... Probably in his hospital bed. 
And don't forget we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Ah, I can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Huh. So she's joined the party then. Very well. I wonder if she has any thoughts on this shovel. That spade has been in here since we started renting the place. Bruno, that's not a spade, it's a shovel. Ah, you're a shoveler, are you? I had a feeling you'd pick me up on that. Oh no, a pick is something else entirely. Now I've dug myself into an even deeper hole. <laughs> Great. Maybe put out this fire before you go? It's spring at last and the weather is warmer now. But I love the smell of the fire and the steam rising from the kettle. Oh, how about some tea, Runo? Thanks, Cyrus, but I'm alright for now. With the green tea Susado-san makes me from time to time and Iris's unique herbal infusions, this place is paradise for a true tea lover. If you're sure, you know I always have plenty whenever you're feeling thirsty. Huh. It seems to be the mixture of old dialogue with new stuff. Hmm. Ah, the Dharma doll I brought with me from home, still with only one eye colored in. I said I'd color the other eye once I won my first court case here in Britain, but... That's cruel, only letting it have one eye? Yes, but it's because I don't consider myself a good enough lawyer yet, you see. And to become a fully-fledged lawyer, Miss Susato will color in the other eye for me. Well, in that case, why not color in the other eye now? And then every time you win a new case, give it an extra eye. Huh? You can never have too many eyes, you know. Call me crazy, but I never consider that. Oh. The telegram's here. Maybe we can read it ourselves. Oh, this looks like a telegram. It is, but you mustn't open it. Not under any circumstances. Alright, I won't. Now then, let's see. No, what did I just say? You mustn't open it. Don't worry, I won't. With this special concoction I've developed, I'll be able to see through the envelope without having to open it. No, that's not allowed either. Oh, but I'm sure it's something important. Little geniuses sure can be mischievous. Do you know, I've never seen inside Miss Susato's room. I haven't so much as put my head around the door. Oh, Susie often invites me up. It's so much fun. Really? What's her room like? I can't tell you that. Oh. A young maiden's private chamber is a place of bittersweet secrets, you know. Where have I heard that before? Yeah, I was gonna say. I suppose some things are the same the world over. We were rather lucky to find that old aquarium left behind here. The prawns we put in there are doing rather well. And the anemones, too. Apparently, tanks like those were very popular in London before I was born. Oh, you mean they're not anymore? I think people discovered it was too much effort to clean them out and change the water all the time. I can believe that. Prawns and anemones are fun for a while. Well, alright. Not too much not too interested in seeing other stuff, so let's leave. Oops. New locations added. St. Sinners and the Prison. Oh, wow. Well, let's take this one step at a time. Sholm's a sweet. Anything interesting here? I assume we'd have all new dialogue on everything, but... Hell no, am I not gonna do that. <laughs> no, sir. 
Okay, out to Baker Street. Yep, there's a carriage. It looks like that's the only thing that's new. There's still a Scotland Yard carriage outside Windebanks. I never imagined we'd be investigating a case so close to home. Poor Iris, she's very upset by all this. I'm sorry, I was there. I should have done more. None of this is your fault, Runo, so please don't apologize. But I... It's the criminals who are to blame for all this, so let's investigate and work out how to catch them. Yes, you're right. Hmm. Hmm. What to do first? The, the crime scene? Mr. Sholmes or the prison? I want to go see Holmes. Sholmes, sorry. I see those windows. And I get and I get flashbacks, man. Hurley. Oh. He's not here. No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't he? Didn't she? Oh, I know what's probably happened. Hurley was being a big baby, and the bullet wound wasn't that bad after all, so he's been sent home. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe or not. There's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Sholm suffered. Oh... Hello, hello. What have we here? This ward is off limits. No visiting. So what are you doing in here, eh? Well, I'll have you know, we're Hurley's next of kin. Eh. Oh, well, begging your pardon then, ma'am, sir. A little lady and a curious eastern gentleman. The great mystery solver has a mysterious family, eh? That's how you see us, um... Sure? Where is he, Constable? Where is Hurley? I believe he is currently in the operating theater, ma'am. Undergoing an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since he went in. Oh dear. Is he going to be alright? Well, it doesn't appear to be working, you see. The anesthetic, that is. Oh! I have heard a report that the gentleman claims he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. Ah. Anyway, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps you should leave and come back later. Oh, poor Hurley. Is it, wasn't it a thing that Sherlock Holmes in the books partook in opium? I feel like that's a thing. I feel like I feel like the actual Sherlock Holmes was a drug user at some point. I could see how that would interfere with the anesthetics. But not to say that um Herlock is doing any such thing. There's a notice board on the wall here, look. Let's see, what does it say? Thought of the day, on seeing any vermin, calmly and discreetly inform matron. Oh yes, they have rats and mice in hospitals like this that love to feast on all the medicine. If you don't deal with them, there's nothing left to treat the patients. Rats and mice? Oh, I see. This is a rather old building, I suppose. But the doctors and nurses are all very good, I hear. I certainly hope so, for Mr. Sholmes' sake. This must be Mr. Sholmes' bed. Poor 
Hurley? I know, it looks as stiff as a board, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think that will bother him. No? I often find him asleep face down on the floor, completely dead to the world. I think I'd call the police if I discovered someone like that. <laughs> I like sleeping on really hard surfaces too. It's comforting. I don't think I ever sleep face down on a hard surface though. <laughs> I wonder what these are. Do you have any idea, Iris? Oh, haven't you ever seen crutches before? Let me explain. They're for people with leg injuries to help them walk. You hold one under each arm, you see. Oh, right. I thought they were weapons of some sort. Why would there be weapons in a hospital? I thought maybe a fighter had been injured in a battle contest and been brought here along with his weapons. That's surprisingly plausible. Hmm, doesn't seem like there's too much else to look at. So... we'll leave. The prison or the crime scene? Definitely the crime scene. This is where it happened then, last night. Ooh. Something's broken on the floor. What is that? The picture frame, maybe? Hmm. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place looking for valuables. But, apart from the policeman in here, you wouldn't know anything that happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals all dressed in black. Ain't that the truth? Oi, I heard that. Oh, Inspector. Um, uh, good morning. Huh. I suppose I ought to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before it was disturbed, at least. Shame you let the two rogues get away, mind. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you'd assigned extra men to the beat around here, Gregsy. Now look what's happened. Hurley's been injured because there weren't enough police on duty. Ugh. Oh. Your ladyship! No one told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has the very best medical care. Of course, your ladyship. The very best doctors in the capital are tending to him as we speak. And I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals was the police's job. Wow. I always pictured him being bald under there. Huh. Absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, ma'am. As you say. The gent in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement, agreement about that. Would you believe it? He's like a completely different person with Iris. Talk about a personality change. Oh, where are we, manners? Are you thirsty, your ladyship? Perhaps you'd like some juice? Some nice, refreshing fruit juice? Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Gregsy? I have some of my special herbal tea with me if you'd like some. Ah, oh, lovely. Not very much that really hit the spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this. Well, Iris does pay the bills, so... <laughs> uh, 
breaking from convention, um, tradition rather, let's actually converse with him first. I want to hear his thoughts. So, how is the investigation going, Inspector? Nothing to it, really. Very simple case, this. There's some very definitive evidence. We're just about to charge that diver we arrested last night, in fact. Gina! You're going to charge her? That's right. Should be able to bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me! Your ladyship, as as much as I would wish to, I could oblige you, I'm afraid. Oh, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? How? How could you? How? How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. Remind me never to try to keep a secret from Iris. So you've arrested the two men who shot Mr. Sholmes, have you? Well, yes, they were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade, oh, and Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison. She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted the key from the jailer, of course. Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What's his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy, no visiting at all. Oh! The bullet must have hit an artery in his midriff. He's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. They've got to stop that bleeding. But he will be all right, won't he? They'll be able to make him better? Uh, of course, your ladyship. He'll be as right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Huh? How do I know? Uh, um, uh, because, uh, uh, of course. Ah, uh, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. We better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh dear, please don't die, Hurley. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operating theater. Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. What? Out with it, Sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. I'm a copper, and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do treat us differently. It's because of those Adventures of Herlock Sholmes stories, that's why. Oh. I crop up in them, don't I, Inspector Tobias Gregson? Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the Inspector, Iris? Um, I don't remember, really. It was one of Sholmes's lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month, my pay doubled. Doubled, I tell you. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, because everyone at the yard reads them. 
they read all the Herlock Sholmes stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time that you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? All it'd take is one bad word from you and Mr. Sh from you and Sholmes could change his tune about me. Gregson? No. The great detective will say, he's getting quite overrated these days. Think what would happen to my salary if that came out in print, eh? Whole thing gives me the willies. I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost to worrying about it. But that would never happen, Gregsy. Every month when the new Rance magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. Ah, lovely. Ta, very much. That really hit the spot, your ladyship. Tea total. Oh, yeah, there's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Naruhoto. Yes? What is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. Are you going to tell me what this important message is, the, is? Sorry. Are you going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about that young lady who's normally by your side, your assistant. Dear Susie, is she all right? She's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope, not anymore. She had to head off. Head off? Where? To go see Stronhart. To Lord Stronhart's office, of course. He summoned her. Ah, oh, yes, of course. I had forgotten about that. One of the whipstocks took her there in a yard carriage after he'd finished questioning her. But she asked us to tell you that she didn't have the fare for the return journey and to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blue and messaging service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go to see the Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me. But I'd better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. Well, surely that can wait. We need to examine things here. Glean all that we can. Unless these guys aren't going to let us look. Alright then, let's see what we can uncover. Oi, what do you think you're doing, Sunshine? You can't touch anything in here. Oh, but we were hoping to investigate. This is a crime scene for Pete's sake, no touching. Right. We need to um become related to the case. We need to become the, de the, the defense attorney for Gina. What's the problem, Gregsy? Runa's a lawyer, you know that. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, your ladyship, ever so sorry. The rules and regulations are a thorn in my side. Of course, if Mr. Naruhoto was to have been properly appointed by the accused, that'd be another matter. The accused? If you could show me some representation papers, I'd be only too happy to let you nose around. Did you hear that, Muno? You need Ginny to sign some representation papers. Looks like presenting the detective here with the correct paperwork is the only way. Oh, fair enough. I could go to the justice's office. But something tells me Susata will not be ready just yet, so... The prison it is. Uh, 
Hello, Gina. What, they let you keep that gun? Oh, you still have the grenade launcher Hurley and I made. I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for? Ginny. I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry? You heard? Get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. You never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. If you think you know me, pull the other one. Oh. You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. If I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. Just to see what I could lay my hands on, get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, but Ginny... I'll be in court tomorrow, they said. Some cove came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like, so it was my right or something. Wait, really? But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer, I don't need no one. She couldn't be staring at me any more obviously if she tried. Why are you being like this, Ginny? <laughs> I don't understand, Gina. Why did you send the public defender away? He wanted me to sign some papers. Representation papers or something like that. It's all going to be rigged anyway, the whole trial. They'll pin it on me because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? Because that's how it's always been for me, growing up in the back slums my whole life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, I'll get your mates dragged off by the coppers, or worse. I've had it happen to me before and all. And sold out and nearly snaffled on the back of it. You can't trust no one, that's the point. As soon as you do, you're gone to grass. Dead. Gina, listen. If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could... Forget it! Ginny! Don't you trust Bruno? Nah, I don't. The, opti the optimist in me wants to say that <laughs> Gina's trying to keep us out of it for our own safety. Maybe she's privy to how deep this conspiracy goes. Uh. Look, I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbrokers. There's nothing to tell. I figured it'd pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. Where well, the old bloke walked in on me and you know the rest. But why, Jenny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and half the time you don't even get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Oh, give it a rest! What'd be the point anyway, eh? Nothing I could say would make a blind bit of difference. Please tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. And you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I've... I've told some unforgivable lies, I have. What do you mean by that? 
What unforgivable lies. What did you mean before, Gina, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're gonna want to question me now. Jenny, please. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you this. Something to remember me by. A photographic print of a really adorable cat. The ice skater's cat was gray, right? Right? Right. I found it in one of the pockets of this coat. Ain't no point in me having it. I wonder what a little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Jenny. Huh. Really nothing else to say to her, huh? Let's take a look here. This is an adorable little cat. I think it looks a little like Wagahai. I always thought that cats like to curl up inside under the heated kotatsu blanket when it snowed. Maybe British cats are different. Hello. Let's see. Um. Uh. Something paid. Does that say Luigi? Date deposited, 13th February, 9 p.m. Um, article deposited, one small box. Loan amount paid, 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th of April, 9 p.m. The late evening of the same day that McGilded was in the incident, right? Look in the back of this print here, there's something written on it. 13th February, 9pm. Article deposited, one small box. Loan amount paid, 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th of April, 9pm. So this photographic print is a redemption ticket. 13th of February? That could be significant. It was just two days before the murder on the omnibus, wasn't it? Oh, two days before. A small box. That doesn't tell us much about it, does it? Bruno, if Mr. McGilded still had the ticket, then presumably he never redeemed the article. So do you think the box might still be present somewhere in the shop? Oh, yes. If it's something Mr. McGilded deposited, we need to investigate. I wish I understood what this said. The cursive is a bit too much for me. Uh, I can read most cursive, but this one is just a bit too stylized for me to glean. I swear this one says Luigi, though. Unless that's a L? I don't know. And yeah, that uh, the red symbol here, the three golden balls, that's a symbol of pawnbrokery, so... I assume this signature is Windebank. I assume. I hope. Alright, then, who else? Um, let's go see Susato, maybe.
Yes. No matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. Do you think the place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. So everything is clear with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust. Yes, thank you very much. Strongheart and Susato, I believe. Yes. There they are. Susato-san and Lord Strongheart. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Very good. There is nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Wait, what did he just say? Your return to your homeland? Susato-san! Oh, um, Mr. Naruhoto. So why was why was Ryunosuke and um what, what's her name Iris why why were they allowed in here anyway Surely the um secretary is like uh Strongheart's in a meeting just wait out here by the door No okay What was that all about Ah Mr Narhodo thank you for coming to collect your colleague What's this all about? Why were you talking about Mr. Sato's return to her homeland? And... and... Tomorrow? Tomorrow? But what about Jinny's trial? You mean... She's been formally charged now? Oh dear... Oh boy. Well, I don't want to go into um conversations. This would be better suited to start from the top next time. So let's look around with Iris a bit. Oh my goodness, just look at all these books. Yes, there are books about the judicial system of all different Western nations. Huh, even for someone like me, it would take at least ten days to read all of these. T t t ten days? I don't think I could finish one in ten days. Just ten days? Oh, I was only joking, Runo. Okay, I believed her. I thought it would be fun to play up with my genius. It's scarily believable with you, that's the trouble. Nice. Those giant suits of armor are still facing each other menacingly across the room. I just can't understand why anyone would wear things like that in battle. They must be so heavy. I expect you'd invent some special lightweight suit if it was down to you, wouldn't you, Iris? Um, I think it was me. I'd invent a world where people didn't need to fight each other in the first place. Aww. Iris, you're a champion. Well, what do you think? That was a model answer, wasn't it? She's ten, Ryunosuke. Ten. And she's leading you around by the nose. <laughs> That's a great line. I love clocks and their mechanisms, don't you? The way all the hundreds of pieces fit together and work as one to move the hands of a single timepiece? Yes, I can imagine clocks are just my, your just your cup of tea. When I was little, I used to dream of one day living inside a clock, you know. Then you must be envious of the Lord Chief Justice having his office in a place like this, I suppose. Um, no, not really. Oh. Well, I mean, that's a dream for when you're little. 
It'll be silly now. Don't let Lord Strongheart hear you talking like that. Anything else? Doesn't look like it. Oh. Of course, the... The centerpiece focal point of this entire room. Um... Right, that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've always dreamt of sitting at a huge desk like that and looking important. Why don't you try it then? Discreetly, of course. Alright, I will. Tell me how I look. Well, Runo, what do you think? A little too discreet. I can't even see you. <laughs> she needs a booster seat. Well... It's a shame we don't have much to go on, but... There was definitely something weird. So those two quote-unquote thugs... It's true that they seem to have shot Herlock Sholmes, but... You never know, it could have been, well... No, you know what, who else could it have been? Herlock and Ryunosuke walked in there, they were facing those two people. And I'm pretty dang sure Herlock was shot in his gut, from the front. Yeah, no, those two people, one of them was definitely the one to shoot Herlock Sholmes. So that's pretty nasty. It's gonna be pretty weird to have such a directly antagonistic person take the stand as a witness next time. But then again, I guess trying to uh, pinpoint a specific witness as being the true culprit is pretty standard fare for Ace Attorney, so who knows. Well, not that we're going to be doing that. Clearly, we're going to be implicating Lord Strawnheart at some point. And to that end... <clears throat> it's interesting. So my first thought upon hearing that Strawnheart is sending Susato back across the sea, and presumably Ryunosuke along with her, my first thought is that he's trying to eliminate all, all chances something wrong could happen, eliminate any chance that they could meddle in the conspiracy, just get them out of the picture. Which is very curious to me, because that telegram to summon Susato in the first place was sent the morning of this whole incident at the pawn brokery. Like, it wouldn't... It's, it's really not too far-fetched to say that this break-in with the... with the thugs and the killing of Windebank could have been planned. But Gina, Gina threw a wrench into that. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The only reason she broke in was because of the personal conversation she had with the other people like Iris and Herlock. So Gina being the, in the wrong place at the wrong time is probably the key to this whole thing. It's through that fact that will have to make wiggle room and find some sort of evidence that will reveal that no, something deeper is going on here and something deeper is absolutely going on here. Now, truth be told, I only just barely managed to glimpse the silhouette uh, the silhouettes of those thugs. Not even that, pretty much just their basic outlines. And from what I glimpsed, neither person um, bore any resemblance to what I remember the, the silhouettes of the 
the foppish dandy man and the yellow chin man. A yellow clothed chin man, I should clarify. That we saw last case. How are they going to figure in? That I don't know. Huh. And speaking of the, um, of this conspiracy, if Windebank prints his notices like these on photographs, I wonder if there aren't gonna be similar info like all of this on the back of the photograph of the dog that we saw on the desk in the pawn brokery. We need to look at those photographs very carefully. God, I wish I knew what this said up top. I swear if this is Luigi, though. Eh. No, I don't think a G looks like that. That looks like an L. And this... It's definitely something... Something U, I, some... Something I. Eh, but whatever. Uh, what a... What a wicked, twisted thing this whole mess is. And knowing our luck, Herlock Sholmes is going to be completely out of the picture for our investigations. Hopefully he can find some way to help at a later point. Hmm. Well, nothing else for it then. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.